Hi there. What's up? I'm Ola, an inhabitant of Lightbulb Moment, aka digital entrepreneur, a proud aunt, and a goofy nerd. I'm Chris, a designer, a creative tech enthusiast, and a semi-grown kid. This is the Renting Bananas podcast. It sound right, boy. This is a letter to my future son. I hope you know that you the one. Hope you know All the right. list is short of things. From so welcome back to Ranting Bananas. We've been out for almost two months now, uh, but we're back with this mini series that will kick us off with a focus on a little life-changing event that happened to Chris. <laughs> the last couple of weeks, Chris was sorting out a lot of things. Um, but he also got someone pregnant. So Chris, uh, can you walk us through what you've been up to and also what the hell? So I've actually moved back to Vietnam. So let me tell you guys on my decision to really go back. I My medical visa in Bangkok was running out. So it was a decision to either renew that visa for another three months or to make it back to Ho Chi Minh. And luckily, I actually decided, hey, um, I'm going to take this opportunity to try and come back. So I made that decision. I mean, the whole process took about four to five weeks, I would say. So, you know, I was busy like printing the paperwork out and just sorting all this stuff and actually had like move house. So I actually sold most of my shit when I was there. Um, sold like my office chair, you know, my, my camera, the first one and the iPad, just try to get rid of as much stuff as I can, pack the stuff, gave friends a bunch of stuff. And then within the last two weeks of um, leaving, uh, I met a girl and yeah, you know, we got along really well. Um, it was, I think the, our, our first time we met, we, we went to like Old Town, Bangkok and it was really cool because we basically went around to lots of pictures and just kind of walked through these like really quaint streets of, of Old Town, Bangkok. If you haven't been there, it's kind of like rustic, um, like old school Chinatown, just like super like small alleys and it's just a really nice place to hang out. And um, because we had just had an alcohol ban throughout the city I was like dying for a drink you know how you when you can't have something you want it more so and then uh, and so I was with this girl and it we were like hanging out by the river it was really cool and she was like oh well my friend's got this party so we actually go to this party and it's in this like massive mansion but it's just like an underground uh cellar if you will and he's got a bar there and uh, it was like one of the only places I think in the city to like serve alcohol because it was like a private gig and it wasn't for customers or patrons um and so yeah me and i had lots of fun and then saw her again um the next day after or a couple of days after and we got along really really well right um of course we hooked up and i had the confirmation of my flight and and date that i needed to leave so then i told her and you know she was a bit like oh well that sucks so we decided to spend a lot of time together within that two weeks, and that was really cool. Um, do you have any questions about that before I get into it? I don't have any questions about that. I just, I think, I think what everyone will be wanting to hear is, you know, what happened. <laughs> Take a sip of beer. Okay. Well, this is what this is what fucking happened, right? Uh, so I'm in the middle of this workshop, not in the middle of this workshop. So like, you know, it's four days, right? And on the third day, third day evening. So on the third night, you know, I'm like super tired, haven't had any food or just like kind of burnt by this time. Cause when you're a facilitator, it's full on, you're supposed to be the energy of the room. So you give like eight to nine hours of energy. So when you just go home, you're just completely shattered. You don't want to do nothing, right? You barely want to eat. So uh, I get a text to say that she's late, right? Um, yeah, her, her period's late. 
and it's been late for like fuck like a long time somewhere like 12 to 14 days or something and i was like holy fuck and she's um i was like well uh have you taken a pregnancy test you should also go to the doctors because sometimes uh, the test ain't you know really reliable so you need to have at least a concrete answer right and then the next night came and yeah she was like yeah i'm pregnant and i was just like holy oh fuck couldn't even think about it right like i was just like oh okay just oh didn't know how God. to deal with it because it was like i'm in like the middle of this work gig and it's taking all my attention away i just read the message and i'm just like what the fuck like well hold on because it because it kind of like a summary of the facts because you guys met two weeks before you left, right? It was two weeks literally before you were leaving for Bangkok. You were already in Vietnam when you found out. Then uh, I guess my question is how, right? Because you didn't use a condom. Yeah, that that would do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would do it. Um, yeah, I had unprotected sex. So dumb. Kids out there, if you're listening, use protection. I don't know how many times I have to say this. Use yeah, protection. Yeah, or tie your tubes. Or tie your fucking tubes. <laughs> but the real wait, question is... Wait, hold on, is... hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you this story, though. Let me tell you this fucking story, though. All right, so... Um, yeah, so the first time we did it, I think I used protection. I think... Yeah, I think I did, right? But and then, like, we got, like, pretty close. It was, like, pretty passionate, let's say, right? And uh, so one of the nights we have unprotected sex and then I'm like, you're on birth control, right? I actually asked that because, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. you have to ask that, right? Um, and then she was like, no, I'm not on birth control. And I'm like, whoa, what happens if, you know, uh, you get pregnant? She's like, well, you know, I'm just going to keep it in it. I'm just like, <laughs> I was like, I completely brushed it off. I didn't even know it was a thing. She's what do you mean you got like I didn't even like entertain that because I because I thought it was a fucking joke, mate. I literally like and I didn't want to argue that because like you know you can go down a whole road of things where right I thought it was actually a fucking joke and it's so funny when I think about it now like I'm just like holy fuck she actually said that to me. No spoilers. <laughs> um, no, but okay. So th for me the question is. So you guys meet, you know you've got two weeks to go. It's fine, right? It's a party, you get drunk, you want to make out, you go back, you hook up. But no protection. And I just, I just still, it, it just doesn't click for me. Like, why wouldn't you use protection? And I think statistically, there's like 40 something people, 40 something percent of people choose not to wear protection. And it's, it's like crazy statistic, you know? And so to me, it's like, are you just this, this statistic or was there something else there? And right. Yeah. It. Good question. Good question. No, man, I'm just, uh, I don't know. Sometimes it kind of ruins the mood. Sometimes you just don't think, like, of the consequences. And, yeah, you just don't think of what could happen and the what maybe the potentially the worst situation or the most adult thing you've ever dealt in your yeah. life will, will occur around the corner, right? Like, that's just not what you're thinking about. All you're thinking about, let me just smash... <laughs> 100% idiot. So, okay, so you're in Vietnam. All this shit is happening. The move, immigration, <clears throat> sorting out work, sorting the, out the apartment, everything. And then I'm late, right? She says, uh, 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 my period is late. I'm, uh, I'm pregnant. Mm. So what was the initial reaction from both parties? Well, I think I called her. I think, like, I was just like, all right, let me call you in like an hour because uh, I was like getting dinner or something and I just went back to my hotel room. So this at this point, I was still staying in a, my second hotel outside of quarantine because I was looking for a place. So there was a lot of things going on, as you mentioned. Uh, so I was in my hotel and yeah, I just called her and we had this, I don't know, two to three hour conversation maybe. And then I was just like, holy fuck. Um, I think there was lots of mixed emotions going on. There was definitely lots of crying on the phone. And uh, I was definitely angry when I was on the phone. 
Um, and I was, I guess, trying to also reason. Uh, I, I don't think I was necessarily angry at her per se, but angry that our views were conflicting or different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know. Like I said to, to Ola and to Steve, like, holy fuck, I should have recorded that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, just because it was just like, I don't know what the fuck just happened. Like I need like some recollection of what fucking happened and because it was like a, so, so much went into it. Um, and I, I don't even know half of the things I said. I can't even actually say that again. But, um, and then, yeah, after that conversation, I, I, uh, spoke to two people, one friend, uh, Steve, who, who lives in Taiwan. And I was like, bro, what the fuck do I do? Right. And of course he took the piss forever. And um, so it wasn't a super serious conversation, but probably what I needed. And then uh, a second friend was, is a friend that lives in Bangkok. And I wanted her to reach out um, mm. to this girl. Let's just call this girl Sarah. Right. And yeah, so I told my friend Jess, hey, uh, which actually coincidentally started renting bananas with me. So Jess, I said, hey, Jess, can you speak to Sarah to just like try get a pulse on what she's thinking and, you know, um, give her advice on, on, on what a girl would do or maybe not advice, but maybe uh, console her a bit and, and just sort of, you know, offer a, a shoulder to cry on. Because inherently, I, I mean, because I just wasn't there, right? So I thought that was a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, maybe, uh, I mean, the reason I chose Jess is because she's fairly objective, right? Or she is objective. Let's just say she's objective. And she would give her opinions no matter if I told her different. And I think that mm -hmm. was one of the reasons I was like, hey, Jess, mm -hmm. can you can you help me out and, and be a good mate? Um, so, yeah. So that's what happened really immediately after the conversation, probably like half a day or a day after it. And emotions were high because because when you guys were hooking up and you didn't, you know, use protection, she had said she would keep it if, if there was ever a baby. So so you knew in that moment when she told you I'm pregnant that there's a chance this person might want to keep this pregnancy. Whereas I think you automatically felt or at least what I remember, um, is that you automatically felt that you don't want it, right? That was like your automatic reaction. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, I, I think um, just, uh, you know, maybe this is like 5% recollection of the numerous conversations I've had with her afterwards. And that week we probably had two to three conversations and they spanned two to three hours, but... Um, they were very tough. They were very tough conversations to have. So interestingly enough, I was reading some uh, some articles, obviously for for prepping it for this thing, because I I obviously had a lot of time <laughs> to think about this since you've told me. Uh, yeah, there was there was the interesting stats about why people, you know, uh, how many people don't wear condoms, which was like in the 40, 40s. Um and then they were saying that. Typically, when surveyed, women said that if they sense there's a possibility for a long-term relationship, they will choose to not wear a condom. That can come from the awkwardness of the conversation. That can come from not wanting to make the partner feel uncomfortable. That can come from, you know, just kind of like not wanting to stop the flow of things. So there's a lot of different reasons, but women tend to take the risk of getting pregnant if they think there's a chance for a longer term relationship. So that's quite interesting. So I guess that leads me to the question of when you guys met um, with Sarah, uh, did you guys ever talk about the relationship uh, type? Like that it's going to be casual, that it's going to be whatever, like, you know. No, I... 
No, I mean, like when asked, I will be completely transparent about how I view where my life is and how relationships in my life revolve around things I care about. So it's actually, I always say it's not my priority or I don't even know why I'm putting quotes because it is actually not my priority, right? So, um, but I don't think we ever got to um, how we view each other. We definitely did speak about previous relationships and she's had typically bad ones. She hasn't really, and her most recent one was only a few months ago. Uh, and then I've had, I've had great ones and I've also had bad ones. Um, so yeah, we're just talking about our past, not really about our future, um, especially together. And I don't think I mentioned how I view relationships, but Sarah did actually listen to some episodes of Ranting Bananas. And so she, I think knows who I am in terms of the relationship, because we speak about relationship a lot, right? On, on, on this podcast and I you know divulge some secrets or not secrets but things I'm not very proud of in the past and yeah she's heard that as well and she was like holy mm. fuck is it true and I'm like yeah it's fucking true man like why would I just lie for the fuck of it right like it happened and that's that's what happened so she kind of knows my take on it I think that's my hypothesis so so wait so you guys so she listened to our podcast and then she um so she had uh asked you if the stuff on the podcast is true or not she so, goes so she, when you do a yeah she goes when you do a podcast are the things you say correct and i was like what is she referring to which episode is she referring to? But of course I know like there's only like two or three ones that are like really out there, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. So I was like, yeah, it's true. It, mm -hmm. I, it, I mean, it's interesting to me because the whole clusterfuck <laughs> of what you were going through, of you, what you are going through, um, for me, it almost stems from communication or the lack thereof, because on both sides, there were some kind of assumptions made in my in my point of view, right? It's, it's a bit like you assumed, okay, so she's asked me about the podcast, so she's probably heard most of it. I'm assuming she's heard uh, the ones about cheating. I'm assuming she's heard about the ones from, um, you know, the stories about my relationships, blah, 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 blah. So I assume she knows what I'm like, but I never explicitly tell her, A, I'm not looking for a long-term thing right now. B, uh, you know, here are my priorities in life. You know, you never really have that explicit conversation because this is new, it's a hookup, you're not sure where it's going, you're just kind of like, whatever, right? No judgment whatsoever on my part, just kind of like trying to state the facts. And on her part, I feel like there was an assumption of kind of like, okay, so I kind of heard about this, but then we do chat about relationships kind of, and we kind of spend a lot of time together. So my assumption is maybe I'm different. Maybe I can change this guy. Maybe uh, this is him, you know, growing up. Maybe, you know, a lot of maybes, a lot of assumptions, and that's how assumptions are, right? And and as the famous saying goes, assumptions make an ass out of you and I. So it's that's what it is. Um, so to me, I feel like really when you look at anything in life, a lot of things just boil down to the crucial bit of communication, right? If there was clear communication, if there was clear um just kind of courage within people to just be like, this is who I am. This is what I'm after. This is what I'm looking for. And this is what I don't want. If both parties had done that, I think there would have been a lot of clarity from the get go, obviously. But <laughs> can I, can I just add to that? Can I just yeah. add to that? Yeah. And I, like I completely agree with you. And I think at a certain point when a relationship gets more mature or you're stepping into boundaries that, might feel uncomfortable or might be uncertain forget the amount of time right but maybe it's a mental state i don't know what it is right 
Uh, everybody has their own sort of barrier or boundary there. But then those conversations are justified, even if only one party feels it, right? Those mm-hmm. things are justified. Then you can bring up the, what is this? You know, have that conversation of like, what are we? You know, that one. But for me, it's like, it kind of just kills it. And you don't, you nobody ever wants to do that first because it's kind of like one of these weird conversations. Like, oh, do I like you more than you like me? Like who who wants to go there first, right? Like it's weird. It's like this whole dance that you do when you date. So, um, so yeah, there's that part of it. And also the very selfish guy part of it is you don't want to cock block yourself, right? Or maybe girls don't want to cock block themselves because if they ask it, they might seem a bit too like full on. Like nobody wants to be seen like that. It's weird, right? So, and if she did ask me, then I'll be like, yeah, well, this is how I view it. Mm-hmm. You know, like no disrespect to you, but this is like what I'm going through and this is how I see see us or or me, relationships in general. Like I have no qualms saying that shit, but sometimes you just don't want to bring it up because it's much easier, right? To not have that hard conversation, especially when I've known her for like, what, seven days, Right? Like I'm not, or like even just two weeks. Like I'm not gonna say it when I go. Like you be like, oh, by the way, you don't mean anything to me. I'll see you later. Like I'm not gonna do that. Like that's just like that's a fucking asshole move, right? Um, yeah, and, I don't no, know. and I get that. I get that. But you were saying, okay, let's go back to the thing you said about the dating dance, right? Because the dance that we all do, kind of, um, when we're dating. Because what is that dance really for? And when we look at the animal kingdom, you know, when birds are looking for mates, when uh, fish are building underwater sculptures and things, it's all to attract a partner. It's all because they want something out of it, right? Um, so in that dance, what was your expectation? Like, what what was your dance for? Because I think Sex. you guys' as dance... Aha. Uh-huh. And I think her dance was for something else. Sure. I mean, yeah, I wasn't just looking for sex. I mean, that was that's the easy answer, right? Uh what I was re- I was looking for company, you know, had had some fun, had some time I'd rather spend not alone with someone that could, you know, hang out with and enjoy their company. I also like people, right? Like I would like to learn about someone and I you know, get inspired by other people's stories i fucking you know get energized by other people just have a good time have jokes and we had jokes like you know so that Mm -hmm, was cool mm -hmm. like it's just hanging out with a mate right but and then you fucking shag him as well and it's like boom bob's your uncle (laughs) okay okay and and fair enough and i think and i think this is why it's so it's so fascinating right i mean and i know was I the third person you told or what? Like I was one of the earlier yeah. people you told after yeah. after your friend in in uh, in Malaysia and Steve. Um, and I know that when we had that conversation, one of the first things we said was, uh, this will be an amazing topic for our podcast. Because even in that moment, we could tell. but Because yes, it's entertainment, but it's not really. It's not, it, it is a very real life subject that all of us at some point or another are going to go through or our friends are going to go through and it it is fascinating because right now we're talking there's potentially another life involved right there's a pregnancy yeah there could be a life right however whatever your stand is on on that but um but it all comes comes down to this vocalizing of like what I want and what I need and what I really don't want right and it's just like both of you were tiptoeing around the things you wanted and if you had in a way I think you like to think of yourself kind of like I'm living my truth because on my podcast all I talk about is getting chicks right and I think you kind of like you hope that that kind of sends a really clear message to people. But honestly, when you look at it, and I call you an asshole all the time, when you look at it, you're a really sweet dude. Like, you're a really sweet guy. And so I think there's a lot of mixed messages 
for girls when they date you, you know, I, 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 and I think you kind of hope like, oh, if I'm like a little bit of a dick, then they'll read the message. But are you really living your truth if you don't face the fact that you are now a 30 something year old person that can't say exactly what they want and communicate that to the other person? I've, but I've, Okay, fair enough. I, I take your point and thank you for calling me a dick and also very sweet. You know, I'm, I take that on board. Thanks. Um, and I agree with you both, uh, both of those points. But I, I don't think I'm not living my truth. Like, because honestly, sometimes I don't even know what I want. And also I think my, I have a vetting process, right? I don't know if I'm going to get into a relationship, right? Like it could be a year before I decided to, to get into a relationship with someone because I just don't want to, you know, jump in and maybe there's some other priorities that I want to focus on. So I, I don't see why I have to say, you know what, this, this is just us fucking like, I don't see why Mm. I have to say that because you know, if if I enjoy spending time with someone, that's clearly what I enjoy doing, right? But who's to say that I need to get into a relationship? I think it's kind of like the whole standard monogamy thing. It's like, oh, just because you're fucking this person, you have the right to say what you want now. Do you want her or you don't want her? Do you want him or you don't want him? It's like, why, do, why does it have to be like that? I don't think I have to live like that. And for someone to tell me, that that's the way it should be. I'm always like, nah, man, that's you. Like, you can do that, right? And you could, fan- like, for me, you could fancy a lot of people at the same time for different reasons, right? And maybe it's hard to juggle for some people. Maybe it's easier to juggle for others. Like, for me, I'm okay with it. It's not that I don't fall for people I date with. That's not true, right? But, and then maybe I get bored quicker. So for me, it's easier not to, like, jump in head first because I maybe have a barrier because I got hurt or like maybe there's some other reasons like I don't see why I have to I don't know just like lay it all out because like we ain't you know nobody's that vulnerable at first right and if I don't know this person I'm not gonna lay it all out unless they wanted me to and if they you know proactively asked and was like nagging me I'll fucking tell them right or even not right I'll like I'll be more and more and progressively more honest and probably more like, you know, bluntly about it. But, you know, I'll I'll of course Mm -hmm. try to be nice at first, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go out of my way to make the person at the end of the day feel shit about themselves. I think it's very hard to tiptoe around this subject because it's, it's, you know, it's so close to people's hearts. Like you're playing with it, right? So it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll rather just keep it like cash friendly nice and then when it gets somewhere it gets somewhere like i'm not trying to force nothing right yeah 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 and i think there's also a lot of gray areas right when you when you um when you first meet people especially if it's unexpected right it's just a party you meet someone and it's like i didn't come out looking for anyone but this kind of happen so i'm also not sure where it's going yeah there's a lot of gray areas and obviously i'm i'm playing devil's advocate because i always i always do and i always like to ask questions and i question everything but but absolutely right i mean you know at what point do you say to yourself oh okay this could be this could be something but now i need to communicate because i don't know if this is what i want or don't want so and how the other person's going to react Et cetera, et cetera. So yes, there's a lot of a lot of gray areas. Um, but anyway, there's this London gherkin-sized pickle right now that you're in. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so, so the question is, does she keep it? Right? Does do you keep it? Both of you did. What next? And. And when, when we had that conversation, when, when you told me, um, I think I had a certain reaction, uh, but also I think it's only fair if we kind of give people my context, because I also actually have been in this situation before, uh, and I chose to have an abortion. Big 
it sound right, boy. 